Sherlock. Sherlock Holmes. What? Sherlock. Sherlock. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Well, I'm Eli Reimarge, and I play Sherlock Holmes. And I'm Scott McCollum, and I play Dr. John Watson. And a patient who called herself Lillian Gibbs, but looks suspiciously like the description you gave me of Matt Larrabee. Ah, excellent. Turned out All right, so the story mostly centers around Sherlock Holmes being hired by an insurance firm to investigate a case involving a woman named Alice Faulkner, who has letters that have uh, very important information on them which then results in a much bigger plot than Sherlock originally intended. We'll, we'll play it safe. Bring off the car! I'm going to essentially um, take some scandalous letters that were written to Prince Karl from a lover of his and expose them in order to create a war between Russia and Bohemia and then once I do that I'll get all the money from the munitions cartel and I will essentially become the richest person alive and then I'll create world war. Charlotte, I think uh, she plays Moriarty very, very villainously, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, I don't even think she's playing a character. I think she's, she's just, nope. like, yeah. bringing out her inner self, truly. Yeah, it's not even method acting. Professor Moriarty has no friend. Professor Moriarty is the friend of no one. Have him attended to. Yes, Professor. My name is Charlotte Brady, and I'm playing Professor Moriarty. I know the difference, I swear. I am the Napoleon of crime. I basically run the uh, criminal underworld of the Sherlock universe, I guess. And I make sure that other criminals do what they want. I have a grand evil plan involving the munitions cartel and uh, Prince Romanov of Russia and the Prince of Bohemia. Yeah, well the challenge um, for me and I imagine Scott and the rest of the cast as well was realizing that this is a, a story full of characters that have been portrayed so many times. Um, Sherlock being, I think, the most portrayed filmic character in history. And so there was that challenge with some of the greats having played these characters. And so for us it was navigating how to approach it with some uniqueness, uh, yet retaining the elements that have made this such a long-lasting story. Your every look, tone, gesture. You think you can read me like a book? A children's book. Get well, Eli's an amazing actor, and I'm a close friend of his. And so our relationship is more one of intellectual, not quite friendship, but definitely a sort of friendly rivalry. I mean, there's some malice from both sides because we both want each other to be defeated. We both don't inherently want the other one to win, but I do offer him a proposal to join me. I don't inherently want him to not be with me. Rather, I think that we make an interesting team together. If you do not agree to join with me, then give me your assurance that you will never again hinder my plans. And if I give no such assurance? Destruction. Well, I mean, it just means that the, when she's like tossing around people and hanging them against chairs and threatening to kill them, yeah. like, that's all real. That's how yeah. she treats her castmates. But it wasn't even written in the script, she just kind of did yeah. that. And like, yeah, the whole thing, that whole thing, people thought it was staged when she throws Sace against the table. She just did that on preview night, and it worked. And she kept doing it. Yeah, it was, it was great. She's oh. awesome. Yes, uh, Sid Prince, Sace. That is fun. We have a few combat scenes together. And we had to rehearse those multiple times because he's about half a foot taller than me. Um, if you trash your addition to get Sherlock, I think it's what you mean. <laughs> Who would, um, I think we all kind of want to have a run at Moriarty, just yeah. to give that evil side. That's always fun. But if I wasn't Moriarty, I kind of wanted to be Watson. I'm a failure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Eli's a great friend of mine, and I definitely like being his partner in Justice, justice, not partner in crime. Well, that's a good exasperated game. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the caption. Uh, my name is Gabby Gerard, and I play Alice Faulkner in Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Alice is a feisty young one. She has somewhat of a love connection with Sherlock. Well, again, I think the issue with Alice was um, chemistry, because for me, and unfortunately it didn't pan out with Scott. Um, <laughs> but having chemistry with the actor is very helpful. 
and I was in a pretty terrible place because of the casting for the show because I didn't have chemistry with Scott or Gabby yeah. for pretty important and key relationships and I, I, you know, I was like, well, how am I supposed to act like I like Watson if I hate him? Yeah. How am I supposed to act like I love Alice if it's Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, to be his foil, I think Gabby's doing a superb job with Alice. Yeah, she's doing a great job with Alice, and frankly, I don't think I could see anyone else playing yeah. Alice other than yeah. Gabby. Like, that, yeah. she was born to play Alice. Yeah, and well, I think the great thing about her is that Alice, in the script, which was written a while ago, is portrayed as a damsel in distress. And so, when she approached it, she did an amazing job at completely subverting that, because in her portrayal is so nuanced that you get none of that helplessness and all of that, you know, she's the, an equal to Sherlock and an equal to Watson. And, and that, that I mean, level, she's at the, I the she's same. a little bit above Watson, Even, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. During, I think it was Monday, our dress rehearsal. In the scene where Eli and I, we get uh, tied up and our ankles are tied together. And Miss Smith had given the suffragettes a note about tying it a little more tightly so it was more believable. But I think one of the suffragettes took it a little bit too literally and he ended up getting his hands free. And then he was like, okay, I'm gonna keep going. He couldn't untie his feet. He hops over to me, says his lines, undoes mine, and then I'm like walking to our exit and he's like, okay, stop. And so there's just about three minutes of me being like, okay, Sherlock, Alice is gonna save you now. And I have to untie his feet. Most hilarious moment. Very ironic that my character is made to be safe, but I ended up saving Eli in that specific moment. The suffragettes, I find them very interesting. I, on the flip side of this board, I have a small murder board where I've written most of the cast with their descriptions and I tried to write the suffragettes as I'd seen them being played with their own personalities in with the suffragettes and the interesting thing about them is that a lot of them didn't really have characteristics, they were just names but the actors like Eva, Marissa, um, Dana especially brought these characters to life. Miss Basic is so quick-witted and fast with her tongue that she, she has this element of almost um, almost motherly to the rest of the suffragettes. Like, she's a leader, but she's also that kind of caring individual. You know, it's, it's not even surprising that Miss Mook, at this point in her, her career, has such a great handle on how to, you know, talk to each individual cast member. Um, and also, she's very good at identifying the arc of a scene, and even what needs to happen for individual lines. Yeah. But at the same time, always maintaining the clear vision of the entire arc of the play which yeah. is helpful for actors on both accounts. Yeah, like, Miss Smook has done amazing jobs in previous years, and this is no different. This is one, one of our of, best. Yeah, this is honestly one of our best sets, one of our best cast, and definitely, mm -hmm. uh, like, Miss Smook has always just been amazing. So once again, I'm a really good director. Miss Smook's a great director. She is very intelligent. She definitely had a vision for the show, and she tried to bring the raw script to life as much as she possibly could. Like, she just worked with the words, she worked with the characterizations. And then, at one point in the show, she just said, go for it. This is where the show becomes yours. This is where I step back and I look at the tech elements, and this is where you bring the characters to life. And I've seen this happen throughout three productions, and whenever she does that, you see kind of a shift in people's mentality. Some of them are scared, because they don't really know what to do with their character, but others just get this smile on their face, like, now it's mine. And I think that she knows that she can direct the words off the page as much as she can, and she has definitely the talent and strength to do that. But it's always the actor who brings the character to life. And I think she has a great way of incorporating people's personalities into the characters that they play. I always love when we use uh, projections, especially because, like, Carson is like a wizard with lights and putting that all together. And yeah, Stephanie's nodding. She's been in the booth. I'm Carson. I am the stage manager for the play and I also helped to design the projections and audio for the, for the play. Um, so a lot of my work was done with um, Stephanie as well, who's the other um, projection designer, and we went through a lot of the script and we um, reviewed a lot of the scenes and what, we listened to the actors, listened to the direction, and kind of figured out what 
we kind of wanted the play to look like and then turn that into a projection. And then Izzy went ahead and drew all the projections, so we kind of worked, that's kind of the projection design element of what I did. And what I'm doing right now is stage managing, so I'm calling all of the cues, I'm making sure all the technicians are organized. We have a really good team of 10 people working on this show um, as technicians, so I'm just kind of leading them through that and kind of guiding them on that path. I'll finally say to myself, you know what, Scott? You made it. You, you've reached the top. There's nowhere else left to go as a 16-year-old. You, yeah. you did everything. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's a good message. <laughs> so this is just the most amazing, talented, wonderful cast and crew of individuals, especially Paul. I love the fact that we make this documentary. It really brings us all together. And, um, yeah. I'm just so happy to be to have worked with all of you. Give women the goat. Marty out. Goodbye, Alice. Think of me as one of the stately homes of England. Fascinating to visit, impossible to live with. Watson, come along, Watson. Get into the foot. I shall never forget you, Sherlock They really did a great job. They made me laugh. They, they drew me in. Very well staged. It was great. Thick frenetic motion in the Baker Street scenes, everyone moving around, the suffragettes, the newsboys, was really great.